Hello, friends. I am here without merit today. Uh, just doing something a little bit different. I had a friend who uploaded on her YouTube channel 20 things she learned in 2020. And I just really loved that idea. I thought it was great because this year has been such a huge year for growth and learning. And so I wanted to do the same thing. And so this morning during our Sabbath, because if you watched our 2021 goals video, you know that we are working on getting Sabbath time. So this morning, during my Sabbath, I sat down and prayed and thought through 20 different things that I learned in 2020, and now I want to share them with you. So, here we go. <laughs> Number one, writing is amazing. I have loved writing since I was in high school. It's always something that I have really enjoyed doing, but this year I have learned through um, a book proposal boot camp that I'm a part of that God has definitely called me to writing. Um, I can see his hand in it. I can see when he is really working through me as I write. And so writing is amazing. I love writing. Number two, I am the girl for the job, which is actually a book by Jess Connolly. And uh, I have been reading that as of lately. I'm about to finish it. And it is just a great reminder that wherever God has placed you, you are the girl or the guy for the job. So like I am Merritt's wife. Um, I am a youth pastor. I am a writer and a speaker and all of those things. God has created me to do those. He has ordained those and they were not a mistake. And so I am I am the person for that job. Number three, writing is hard. So while writing is amazing, it is also very, very hard, even though it's something that I love doing, which I think is a really good reminder that even good things take time. They take hard work, they take practice, and sometimes you will fail even at good things. And so the hard stuff doesn't mean that it's bad, it just means that you have to work hard at it and good things take time and hard work. And so don't give up on things just because they're difficult. Number four, God has a better story. So for those of you who might not know, because of my cancer treatment that I received, I am not supposed to be able to have biological children. I'm not supposed to be able to get pregnant. So Merritt and I decided this year that we wanted to go ahead and try and so I prayed for a specific date to get pregnant by. I prayed that by September 22nd, which is technically the end of summer, I would be pregnant. And I prayed and I prayed and I prayed and it did not happen. And I was very frustrated and upset about it. And I remember praying and I wrote in my prayer, prayer journal, God, this would have been such a cool story. This would have been an amazing miracle. And imagine the people that could have been reached. This would have been an amazing story. And I heard in my spirit, yes, but I have a better story. And so God's story is so much better than what we could imagine. He has a better story, a more perfect plan. And it's something that we can't even begin to understand or comprehend. And it's much more magnificent, much larger than my own. Number five. God shows up in the unexpected. I think we can all agree that 2020 was unexpected. And a pandemic and a protests and murder hornets and the fires and like, what else am I missing? A whole bunch of things. All of it was unexpected. 2020 was absolutely crazy. However, God still shows up in those moments. Uh, the room that I am currently sitting in is a testament to that. This was supposed to be the nursery, that was what I was praying for, but we turned it into an office whenever I didn't get pregnant and God has showed up in here. Um, he shows up in tears. Uh, I learned how to get skateboard. He shows up in skateboarding. Every little thing, he is in it and he shows up unexpected and in magnificent ways. Number six is I can do hard things. Uh, we already discussed, writing has been really hard. 
I can do it. I am doing it. Skateboarding. I had never learned to skateboard before. I remember trying when I was in middle school and I was like, this is way too hard and I'm way too clumsy for this. But I decided for my 25th birthday, I wanted a skateboard. So I got one and I learned how to skateboard. Some of you might be like, Addy, that's not actually that hard. I thought it was hard, okay? <laughs> um, another thing is I learned how to drive stick shift, which is a huge accomplishment for me. When I turned 16, my parents got me a stick shift car. I could not figure out how to drive it and I was deathly afraid of driving. And so they ended up selling it and I had to get a new car. And so I decided this year I was gonna learn how to drive one. We bought a stick shift car and now I love it. I absolutely love it. And those two things, while super minuscule, remind me that I can do hard things. Number seven, don't forget about the Holy Spirit. And man, is the Holy Spirit absolutely amazing. Our youth camp theme this year was Spirit Lead Me. And that is a hard topic to understand and comprehend, but we forget about the Holy Spirit all the time. And Jesus left this earth so that the Holy Spirit could come and dwell in us. And so when we forget about the Holy Spirit, we're forgetting about God. We're forgetting about his power in our lives and we're forgetting about how he speaks to us. And so it is so important that we remember the Holy Spirit and how the Holy Spirit works in our lives. Um, that was a huge thing this year for me. Number eight, the Bible is hard to read. Um, I have started reading through the Bible in chronological order, which means I've started in the Old Testament. And some of the things in the Old Testament are hard to understand. They don't make sense. I don't understand the laws. I don't understand the culture because obviously I have not, I'm not back in that culture. I'm not in that time. And so it's hard to read. And then other times I just don't like what the Bible has to say. Um, it's frustrating to me. I don't understand it. And so I, I don't like it, but there is a reason that those things are in there. There is a reason that God had those things put in the Bible. And so while the Bible is hard to read, I also know that it is important to read. Number nine, God is constant. Again, this time of year was absolutely chaotic. Um, we have no control in our lives. And anything that we feel like we can control or think we can control is a false sense of security. But God is constant in every season of life. He is always faithful. His truths stand firm. His promises stand firm. And he is constant and remains the same. Number 10, God cares about fun. I've never really thought of God in that way, of God caring about fun, but I think I have learned that now that I am a youth pastor and I have a blast with my youth kids. We play the funniest games. We laugh until we cry. We put on talent shows. We sing goofy songs. We belt out Hamilton, like all kinds of different things. And we have so much fun and God cares about that, those moments because he is the creator and the author of fun. He created laughter and joy and happiness. And so to think that he doesn't care about fun is forgetting the character of God and the fact that he created us to be able to laugh. And we laugh so hard that tears are streaming down our face. And so something that I just really learned this year is that God really does care about the fun that we're having. Number 11, I cannot serve from a place of exhaustion, which goes back to our goal of having, having a Sabbath. We started that goal in 2020, fell off, and now we are starting that goal again in 2021. And if we truly want to be able to serve people um, pursue God's kingdom and spread the gospel, then we have to be able to serve from a place of rest. We have to have rest. There's a reason that Jesus said, like, come to me if you are weary. We grow weary at times and we cannot serve from a place of exhaustion. We have to serve from a place of rest. Number 12 means God does not run out of blessings. We cannot have a scarcity mentality. We have to remember that God abundantly gives. He is the father of good gifts. And so he gives abundantly and he is not gonna run out of blessings just because he blessed someone else. Number 13, God uses technology. I 
never thought that we would be using Zoom and Instagram Live and Facebook Live as our main source of church and youth group, but we had to this year and God used it. Um, it was hard. It was annoying. I did not like it very much, but God still used it and it was awesome. And so God can use technology. Like those things don't hold him back. Nothing holds him back from moving. And so technology is not an obstacle for God. He can still use it. Number 14, I have to admit when I am wrong. I don't like that one. <laughs> um, but I learned this year that I was missing out on a lot because I didn't follow my brothers and sisters who are of color. Um, I didn't follow people of color. And so I realized that I was wrong in a lot of areas. And so because of that, I have started following more people of color and they have taught me so much. And I realized that I was missing out on a lot of the kingdom of God um, because the kingdom of God is extremely diverse. And so I'm very thankful that while being wrong is no fun, um, it's great to admit when you're wrong and learn from being wrong and then continue forward and continue learning. Number 15, God's answer is sometimes no. Like I mentioned earlier, uh, we prayed to be able to get pregnant by September 22nd and that did not happen. And some people would say that God didn't answer the prayer. I think a lot of times when things don't go our way and we pray for something and it doesn't happen, then we think that God didn't answer the prayer when in fact the answer was no. We don't like that all the time. That's hard and frustrating. But God's answer is sometimes no. And some people might say, well, Addie, like, it's just not yet. You know, you could still get pregnant. And I could still get pregnant. That is still a miracle that God might do in the future. But my specific prayer was for September 22nd. That didn't happen, which means that God said no for that timing. And that's okay. He has done amazing things since then and will continue to do amazing things. Um, but sometimes God's answer is no. Number 16, God covers my weaknesses. Um, every area that I fail, every area where I am weak and my strengths and gifts are not good, God covers those. And thank goodness that he does because there are so many areas that I am weak in. And so I'm thankful for his love and his covering and that his, his strength um, is made known in my weakness. Number 17, I am not in competition with others. That is so hard for me to remember. Whenever I see someone else's successes, someone else doing what I want to be doing, some goals that I have, and I see other people accomplishing that those goals and I am not there, I think, oh no, I'm in competition with them. This goes back to the scarcity mentality. I think that God's going to run out of blessings. And so I have to, I'm in competition and I have to get there first because if I don't, then that blessing is no longer going to be there. But that is just simply not true. He has blessed those people in a unique way and he will bless me in a unique way. Number 18, it is not about my ego, which again is something that's really hard for me. I noticed multiple times over the course of this year when I would get caught up in the youth group and what I was teaching and the things that we were doing, I would get worried about my ego when really it is about God and his glory and his goodness. It is not about me. And so I constantly have to tell myself that, that it is not about me. It is not about my ego. It is about God. Number 19, gratitude is important. We did like a whole series over positive thinking and gra gratitude in our youth group. And it just reminded me that gratitude is so important because God literally created our brains to be transformed whenever we are expressing gratitude and um, living in thankfulness. If Just look it up. It's absolutely crazy what gratitude does to our brains. And God created us that way. And so gratitude is so, so, so important. And finally, number 20, I just want Jesus. He is enough, he is good, and he is holy. And no matter what this world brings, Jesus is enough. And I, I just want Jesus. I want to fall in love with Jesus. I want more of him always and forever. It is about Jesus. 
So those are the things that I learned this year. Thank you for watching. Um, I hope that you can take some of these into 2021 and experience them as well. And let's go get 2021. Let's see what God has in store for us. Um, and let's see the awesome things that he is going to do.